gentlemen. Get money, yo. My man, what's up, brother? Who we got, father? I'll give you a call back in a little bit. East Coast, Philadelphia, born and raised In the streets is where I spent most of my days Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool And against my dad's wishes when I dropped out of school But yeah. mom didn't raise no food, no yeah. a rookie My life took a change when I found my first hey, rookie It's not my fault, and it's not the city's fault That beans, some of the best minds in the world have come from Steve's. Next thing Philadelphia, know, Pennsylvania guys, like You know, the, the people who are on the radio who are from New York Who are from California They give love to their native sons right huh sure so we supposed to be i mean look at all the great minds that have come from here and there's a lot of crappy ones too don't get me wrong beginning with ours exactly if we could be successful anybody could be successful but this guy is successful for one reason harry because he delivers he is the philly godfather for the first time on sirius xm 111 but a long time friend of the program the great Philly Godfather. How are you, man? Great, man. Just trying to keep safe, trying to keep busy, setting up the new office, uh, getting ready for uh, sports to come back, getting ready for all the action so we can start firing again. Played a little bit of basketball, and now I'm on the radio with the two legends of uh, Philly radio, Harry Mays and Tony Bruno. It's an honor. And don't forget national radio, man. We, you know, we're not just keeping it local anymore. This is We're internationally known now, Philly Godfather, as you well know. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, I saw the picture of your office. And everybody's posting those now. But I saw you playing basketball. You even, like, were putting bets on whether you made the shot. So you're taking a shot. You're on your own house. It's in your own backyard. So you didn't have to get a couple pieces of two-by-fours and seal your rim to prevent you from going outside on your own property to play with your kids, right? Yeah, we got 10 acres over here. We got basketball courts, tennis courts, alpacas. You name it, we got them. Beautiful now. People want to know when you're, uh, you're going to post pictures of your, your C6 Corvette with the chrome spinning rims. Do you have any, do you have any pictures of that? Now, I haven't gotten a new one yet. I'm going to wait off, man. This, uh, this uh, pandemic has slowed down business big time, so it's better to play safe than sorry. Hey, PGF, if this thing goes on uh, much longer, I, can I come down there and at least, like, uh, design a golf hole on your 10 acres? You know, like a green, a green. I'll even put a bunker in and everything. T at a tee box, the I whole I think he's nine. got a bunker already well, in the might. basement. Yeah, he yeah. built. Well, he doesn't have sand at his no. bunker. <laughs> uh, uh, anytime you want, Harry, you're invited, man. Come on over. I bro. may be coming down there and pitching a tent for, for, for a long. Yeah. I need to get out of the city, man. I got to get the hell out of here and get to some fresh air. I know. I mean, it's an outrage. All right, now we got action. And we, we're, the first thing we're talking about is the Gronk effect, mm -hmm. which is, you know, because last year you hit, you, I mean, you had LSU before anybody even knew about it. You had the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC before anybody knew about it. So it's all about looking, projecting what's going to happen in the future. You know, there's a lot of bets you can make today and then find out tonight. When you can look seven, eight, nine, ten months ahead, that's when you know you got it going on, my friend. Yeah, you got it. You know, be ahead of the curve. you got to get the best of the number. And, again, this year, back in early March on Twitter, gave out Tampa Bay at 50-1 to 1 to win the Super Bowl before the Tom Brady news, and we gave them out at plus 700 to win the South. So uh, we're sitting on some pretty good numbers, and everyone that followed me on Twitter sitting on a great number, and all my members at thephillygodfather.com. We're sitting pretty. I, I mean, Tampa Bay is going to be a beast this year. And people always, talk, you know, people always love betting against New England because you were always paying a premium to back that team. And the line would always be inflated. But guess what? They kept covering. They made you rich. So I think the same thing's going to happen this year with Tampa Bay. Now, the line went from 14 to 1. They're down to 12 to 1. Is that going to go lower? Because you know what happens. People are going to get excited. and they're going Because I think 12 to 1 is a pretty good number right now. Oh, it's a great number. I've even seen it as low as 10 to 1. So the Gronk effect is real. The Tom Brady effect is big time. And their season win totals went from 9 to 9.5. I've seen them as high as 10 which is tough in that division. There's some good teams with the Saints, the Panthers, and the Falcons are going to be supposed to be much better. So 10's a tough number. Over 9, I think, was an easy easy bet. 10, 10.5 10 gets a little shady, so you got to be careful when you, you know, when you're placing these wagers. All right, what about uh, tonight with the draft, what, where Tua gets drafted? I'm very curious about, about that. Over 4.5, over 3.5 are some of the, uh, uh, the numbers I'm looking at, minus 210 is over 3.5, minus 225 over 4.5. What would you do with that? I mean, he's banged up. And anytime there's a lot of uncertainty in any market, whether it's you know stock market, real estate market, and now you've got the draft, guys that were banked up tend to fall, man. And I, I, I mean, you can even go over 5.5 plus 150 I've seen out there if you don't want to lay uh, the heavy number. 
I think he's going to drop. I, I, I can't see him go under, under five and a half. I'll go over four and a half, over five and a half. Uh, if you don't want to lay the heavy juice, go over five and a half. Well, you know, if, wow. you, if he's the second pick, which he's not going to be, that would be unless there's a crazy development. Yeah, 16 I don't see to that. 1. Uh, as the fourth pick, he's 17 to 2. As the third pick, he's 9 to 2. Sixth pick, 15 to 4. But the fifth pick is where a lot of people think he may wind up in the Miami situation. It's 8 to 5. Honestly, I think he can go to the Chargers at six. Miami is that team that can mess up everyone's mock draft because they got three picks in the first round. They got 14 picks overall. So if they move up to trade up to number three to grab an offensive tackle, then that changes everything. But I think they're going to go after Herbert. I think people, you know, these teams are scared of Tua. It's one of those years where anyone that was banged up is going to drop, whether you're a quarterback, whether you're a wide receiver, whether you're an offensive lineman. If you're a banked up, you're going to drop down in this draft because these teams couldn't look at these players the way they wanted to. I mean, it's just a lot of uncertainty, and I think teams are going to play it safe. I think they're going to be looking at a lot more offensive linemen. you got a lot of great wide receivers in this draft. you got, you know, four solid quarterbacks are definitely going to go in the first round, Burrow, Herbert, uh, Love, and Tua. It just depends how high you think Tua's going to go. And with that type of injury that he has, I mean, that's, that's not a shoulder injury. That's, that's that Bo Jackson injury, and that could be very serious. He's the type of player that loves to, to draw contact, to make plays happen. That's a dangerous proposition for any one of these teams to pick up this high in the draft. This I, all, yeah, I, need a, I, need, I need a lock. I need, I, well, this almost always, seems too easy. I got one here. Yeah, I need a lock. Total players from Clemson drafted in the first round. It's over one and a half. I, it's easily two. Right? Yeah, but what do you have? What is it? Minus 120? Well, no, it's minus 225. You got to lay 225. Whew, that's heavy juice. I, li- I like, you know, I like, I like under a half a running back picked in the first round. I don't think DeAndre Swift gets picked. You don't think so? Yeah. So I, you grab plus 150. So you're, so you're getting positive money. Mm-hmm. It's, it's basically a coin flip, and they're giving you plus 150 on a coin flip. I want to take that bet every time. Philly Godfather. You can follow him on Twitter at Philly Godfather. Betting against the local kid. How about that? It's not about, you Man. know, it's not, loyalty is only as uh, thin as your wallet right now, Harry. <laughs> Mine's pretty thin. I need action. I need action. I'm not going to go online and, 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 and play dumb video games. I need legitimate action. Quarterbacks plus running backs. <laughs> drafted in the first round under five. You like that? Quarterbacks and running backs under five? Yeah. yeah. What, what, you get plus money on it? Uh, no, it's minus 140. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I like that. I, like, I would lay that 140. Okay. I also like over 16 and a half offensive players uh, in the first round. you got so many offensive linemen. you got eight or nine guys. A lot of wide play. receivers. Yep. Yeah, you got quarterbacks. a lot of wide receivers. you got four quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good one. C.D. Lamb on the 12 and a half. I laid 150 on it. I think that number went up to as high as 200 or 220. Uh, the Raiders are looking to get him, but if the Broncos trade up to number 11, Mm-hmm. Uh, number town, so they they might be able to grab him early, right? Uh, like that bet. Uh, you think else? he's definitely uh, the first wide receiver out, off the board? Yeah, yeah, he's definitely the first wide receiver off the board like that. Derek Brown is intriguing. He's a monster. He's a man child, over three hundred twenty pounds. Mm-hmm. I went under seven and a half. I just think he's probably the fourth best player in this draft. I think someone's going to grab him. Late one fifty on that. Uh, CD Lamb, like we talked about, total offensive players over uh, two or over. Four and a half or five and a half, whatever you want, you know, which way you want to go, whether you want to lay the big juice on it or take the plus money at over five and a half. And uh, they're, they're pretty much my safer bets. A couple of years ago, I got some solid intel on Joey Bosa when we went under three and a half plus 500. I gave it out on Twitter for free. This year, uh, the intel just ain't there, man. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of these teams are, are hesitant. They're flip flopping every day. You're hearing different, you know, news on every team all the time. And uh, nothing, you know, nothing that we can actually bury that I can give out an all-out burial alert right. on Twitter. Is there, so, yeah. is there a prop for Jerry Judy now that he's one of the guys that uh, is rumored to fall a little bit? Uh, Jerry, I think it was what, over twelve and a half plus a buck fifteen or a buck twenty under. It's still juice at a minus one forty-five. So he's probably going to go to the Forty Niners thirteen. Uh, so I would go over twelve and a half, take yeah. the plus money there because that's also a coin flip, and you know. On coin flips, I'm always taking the plus money. I'm hearing whispers of uh, the Giants, plus 300, uh, worse. Oh, yeah. From That's Iowa. what I'm hearing whispers. Under 8.5, minus 140, you can, you can take that also. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's probably the best offensive lineman uh, in this draft. Uh, I mean, him and Wills. You know, but from, I'm from hearing Alabama. whispers that they're going after worse. So if you're getting plus 300, you got to make the wager. You're here to make money. You're not here to lay heavy odds. Right. But you can get crushed that way. You know, my biggest question is, 
with all of his numbers and stuff, because obviously when we have games, we know, and, and, ben, and people who don't like gambling, guess what? It's bigger than ever. When the NFL starts embracing and starts putting up point spreads now on the screens on games, you know they have finally come in. They're like Pennsylvania with liquor laws. Yeah. They've been resisting <laughs> so long to have people acknowledge that you can bet on football, and now the states are making money from it. Then they finally now embrace it. So everybody wants the, the odds, and right now we don't have a lot of games. Now, are you going to get into the Bundesliga because they're starting up in May oh, 9th, he will. Billy Godfather? <laughs> wherever, I, wherever I find an edge. I mean, <laughs> if we're tossing quarters, if I've got an edge, I'm going to bet it. You know, I'm always looking for that edge. I'm always looking for positive expectation. I'm looking.